Good morning again. So, as I initially announced, we're about to start. So, I'd like to kindly hand over to for the overview of the food and beverage segment sector. Uh, it's going to be done by Helen Gray Beiser. Uh, I said is the food and community co-chair of EPBN, and she is the president and managing director of Charm. Muted. Bottled water, snacks, seasonings, condiments, fats and oils, as well as um, food and dietary supplements and foods for special and um, medical nutrition. As of 2015-2016, um, food manufacturing still remains one of the most dominant primary industry in the country. So for um, business potential, like um, for um, I have uh, identified here some uh, possible or potential that um, for 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 British companies that actually uh, wanted or wishes to conduct business here in the Philippines. First and foremost, of course, we have a very strong economic growth. Um, it has been like this for the past since 2013. A uh, strong consumer base, booming consumer spending or higher disposable incomes, and fast-growing urbanized populations. And of course, this includes the middle generations, the younger generations. And these consumers are also more sophisticated these days when it comes to taste. Uh, they prefer quality lifestyle, and they have this higher awareness to food quality and safety as well. And situated strictly um, yes, um, in the Southeast Asian region, and also um, it, uh, it has this uh, free trade agreements with various countries, like with um, the ASEAN, um, China, Japan, the New Zealand, uh, Australia, and the US market. And of course, um, they have um, access to and for the fastest growth potential, um, I can see that food products have been highly food as well, which includes um, the cheeses, uh, wines, and especially products of sausages, and even um, sugar.
muted. I was like, yeah, for lobbying um, from the Senate, Congress, all these um, regulatory bodies. And another strength is, of course, um, most recently and for the past year, uh, the FDA has been open, has been open to the industry. So the FDA industry stakeholders, um, um, technical working group, yes, was um, was um, built last July 2015, and um, under this, uh, we were able to have these unified licensing requirements, uh, which is uh, under the administrative order 2016-003. If you're interested, um, you can go to the website of the FDA. Uh, we also were able to um, come up with the e-registration for the certificate of product registrations from low, medium, and high-risk products. And uh, of course, we now have the um, uh, e-registration for the licensing um, uh, from FDA Circular 2016 004. Um, in the past years, normally this um, uh, certificate for product registration and licensing takes a long, long time to, you know, to acquire. So, but um, recently there has been significant improvement. So the industry is um, quite happy. The challenges, um, of course, we still have the trade barriers from front of back, back of back issues, um, uh, best before dates or other codex um, issues, and of course the harmonization of standards. We still have to improve this, but you know the industry is exactly you know, we continue to do you know our part, and of course ban of certain foods in school like um, soft drinks is basically banned in schools and FDA regulations sometimes interpretation or consistency of evaluators can vary so it can, can be very subjective and of course um, we have here the FDA certificate of product registration timeline releases although it's improving and um, certificate of product registration for ingredients or raw material for further processing is still required for companies that have been in languages. And another challenge of smuggling is, of course, foods and your costs issue. Again, sometimes, and the Philippine Security Exchange Commission's regulation were in um, a foreigner normally cannot own 100 percent of the yeah of the business, so it's going to be like 60 percent for for Filipinos and 40 percent for for foreign investors. Bureau of Internal Revenue regulations, so it's a big issue. And of course, city and municipal regulations vary from one city to the other. So you have to have a very good um, you know, uh, team you know, to, to overcome all these challenges. And of course, the threats, uh, Sweden Beverages Tax Bill or the House Bill 3365, this has been raised last or the other year. And um, currently, this is not, the, uh, we haven't seen the final draft yet. So it's either they they drop this or they will continue this. Um, I'm sure the UK is also has this bill, and um, of course the implementation of liquor ban. Um, this has been announced by the presumptive um, president Rodrigo Duterte. Uh, that's going to be a liquor ban from say from 1 a.m. and liquor ban, you know, people are not allowing. Um, from 2 a.m. So, so far, no major threats. We don't see any major threats, which is good. And last slide I have here is, of course, if you wish to um, to, to, to invest in the country, of course, you, your, you ha your products should be suitable to the local market. You have to look at the suitability to the local market. And um, 
availability of your resources and capabilities to deliver. And uh, you have to identify your advantages or competitive advantages, um, reliability of your product, quality, and support. And um, of course, your marketing and sales distribution channels, you have to identify that as well. And you have to have people with expertise in your area, um, expertise in exporting from your end. And of course, you know, people, local people that has knowledge you know, in importing. And of course, you have to identify your strategies and risk. And um, most importantly, you really have um, to comply to local and international regulations. Like forever. <laughs> so this is it. And thank you for your time. Picture. It's on. It's on. Okay, thank you very much, Helen Grace. Um, we're going to now have a one minute pause as we transfer across. As I said, the other speaker, uh, let me just reintroduce him as Mr. Stephen Kua. He is the president of the Philippine Amalgamated Supermarkets Association, and he will be discussing opportunities in the food and beverage sector. Obviously, Helen Grace has just given us a very comprehensive overview of that sector. So please bear with us. We have a one minute uh, pause as we transfer across. Then we'll have the next speaker. And then after that, questions and answers. Thank you very much. Unmuted. Okay, I'd like to show you an overview of the food retail industry in the Philippines. Hello, good morning. We have a wide consumer base. Uh, that was approximately 103 million people now, as of uh, sometime September last year. And it's growing at a rate of 1.81%. Um, a lot of the people are below 15 years of age, that's 34%. No? And... Um, 95.7% of the population are below 65 years of age or the productive uh, age. Um, a lot of uh, remittances coming in from overseas uh, Filipino workers, okay, and it's a growing um, amount of money that's been flowing in every month. Uh, also, the business process of sourcing industry uh, has just overtaken the uh, remittances sent in by the overseas Filipino workers as of late and also a very strong uh, tourism market in the country. The rise of the middle class, um, the bigger middle class households are now 54% of the population from just a mere 44% in 1998. Uh, these are money people who are uh, learned and um, who are value conscious. Okay? They have higher per capita income for spending 
for consumer goods, durables, uh, beverage education, healthcare, housing, and uh, cars. Affluent market last year, a market segment with growing affluence, the gadget generation, so mobile commerce is about to take off, an expanding gray market uh, for senior citizens, time pressured workforce, so the growth of convenience stores in urban centers all over the country, and higher incomes for families with uh, overseas Filipino workers uh, working outside the country. Okay, um, in this slide you will see that um, for 2013 um, there has been a growth in uh, uh, expenditure, a growth in uh, uh, spending on the various uh, different uh, needs in one's household, no? uh, from entertainment. Uh, entertainment has gone down a bit, but uh, savings is about equal. But um, new tech products uh, has been down a bit because people already have cell phones and uh, various gadgets. You know? But uh, for holiday certifications, that's domestic as well as international tourism, it's been up. And uh, home improvement, uh, a lot of uh, condominiums are being built and the communities. Again, a growing middle class uh, market now with positive economic outlook, even with the uh, onset of the uh, new president uh, being inaugurated June 30th, uh, people are very uh, upbeat about the economy as well as consumers are very upbeat about uh, what to expect uh, in the year to come. Uh, and there's a lot of spare cash uh, spent on none, fast moving consumer goods as well. Uh, there is a, uh, an opportunity for premiumization, which means uh, products which you'd like to sell to the uh, uh, higher the the the, uh, the market with the uh, higher income. Uh, people are willing to spend more for uh, entertainment, for uh, their vacations, uh, as well as uh, goods within a supermarket. Again, the continued inflow of uh, foreign remittances is a good sign that the economy will be, can be sustained and the consistent revenues from a growing business process outsourcing industry. You will find that there are many townships being developed uh, all over Metro Manila. This is a map of Metro Manila. Uh, it's made up of uh, 16 cities and one municipality. And you will find that there are many projects coming up in all these areas. No? So it's a very uh, well-balanced uh, uh, growth of communities. That's both commercial centers as well as residential buildings. Okay, for those in the food business, you'll find out that um, all formats put together uh, of, of supermarkets, 51%, uh, the figure down below, um, is still food. 13% okay? is fresh food inside uh, the different formats of uh, food retailers, and the balance being uh, the durables or the non-food section, and uh, the miscellaneous or other sections like gift, gift items and uh, school supplies, office supplies. Oh, this is an example of a product which hit it big here, um, you know, Magnum. Uh, this is one product wherein customers were really angry not to find it inside you know, inside supermarkets. So, you know, it's such a blessing to have a product where customers are practically angry at a supermarket for not carrying the product. Uh, there was a time where uh, demand uh, far exceeded supply, so there was a lack of supply of this product. Canned goods. Um, the Philippines being under American you know, uh, rule for a good number of years now. This is one country in Asia where people buy a lot of canned foods, you know, where um, the life of the product is uh, is longer, is, uh, stays fresh longer than those uh, we, the items which are fresh or refrigerated. Again, uh, a while ago that was canned fish. This one, this time you find canned vegetables and canned meat. Oh, well, spam or spiced ham is very popular here in this country. Uh, you find them in practically all supermarkets, e even if the price is a bit more, you know expensive than the local uh, it can be. 
Oh, Maling from China is a very popular item here. You know? And uh, a lot of the local manufacturers have uh, tried to compete against this product from China. Again, uh, pasta is very popular. So, you know, uh, Filipinos are very open to different types of cuisine, uh, Thai food, um, Korean, uh, and especially spaghetti is a household item here. It's not for special, it's not for special occasions. Condiments is another uh, very exciting and uh, interesting uh, investment for people who want to get in food. Um, the food in this country is a bit, uh, it's mixed. It's a bit spicy, can be sour, uh, sometimes bitter. So people like to experiment and uh, try out different kinds of condiments which go with different types of uh, uh, comfort food. Spices from all over is also a welcome uh, category inside a supermarket. Okay, snack foods. Okay, uh, people in this country spend a lot of uh, money in beverages as because it's a hot country, as well as snack foods. Nuts, uh, again, uh, items or food items uh, you'd bring to a cinema or when you're on a leisurely trip. Ah, this is uh, one item from Spain, no? Creamy Delight. It's a unrefrigerated yogurt. No? This is one underperforming item I find in this country. There are many items here which are underperforming because of lack of... Uh, uh, Awareness of the market, no, and probably lack of marketing, proper marketing. No? The, the, the potential is great, but people are not aware that this is even, you know, yogurt, uh, unrefrigerated yogurt. Okay. Liquor and spirits, that is also one uh, opportunity for people who might want to sell items to, the, to this country. Um, do people here drink a lot? Uh, a lot of the masses, uh, the lower level income people, drink beer and gin. Okay. But uh, there is a growing market for wines, and uh, since the middle income is a growing market, uh, so we're talking about wines and uh, brandy. No? The local uh, manufacturer of uh, brandy here just bought Fundador in Spain. They bought the whole company. Again, that's a more expensive type of liquor. Uh, it's not very clear, but these are the more expensive type of liquor, and it does sell in this country. Health and beauty, that is, uh, it's a non-food item, but uh, it is selling very well in this country. People want to get whiter, uh, they want to smell good, they want to look good. So, you know, this thing sells even during times when, when times are bad, people want to look good. Again, uh, here we find diapers you know, for the babies, for a growing population. You know? uh, this one country we, uh, where the population has been growing rapidly. And uh, soap, that soap stuff, that, that's also a very strong category in the supermarket. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to the non-food section, but toothpaste, you know, it also sells well. Uh, detergent. Okay, now we go to tourism. You will find the tourism, uh, the bar, the, the graph on the left side shows you that the growth, growth of tourism arrivals, this is for foreign tourists, you know, has been you know, growing uh, in, 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 multi, in, in uh, geometrically, you know, uh, doing very well and with uh, better peace and order in the country, uh, you'll find this increasing. Also, domestic tourism is doing very well. Okay. Um, these are, uh, the next few slides just shows that our organization, our association of supermarkets uh, do deal with embassies now and um, Taiwan, the Spanish embassy bringing their pork uh, we went on tour to Indonesia, um, again, a hypermarket in Indonesia, yes, to show that um, in Korea. So a lot of people want to bring in their goods to the country and have been inviting us to go check out on their islands. But again, you have to be careful. This is a warm, tropical country. So items which you brought in from Korea, which were not yet supposed to have been expired, expired earlier because of that different climate. We uh, continue to look forward to the entry of new brands and innovative business concepts. Thank you.
Stop. Give me on the screen. There you oh. go. Not at all. Where are the questions? Uh, good, good morning again, everyone. Uh, thank you very much to Stephen, and of course, thank you very much to Helen Grace for the earlier presentation. We are now in the questions and answers stage, so obviously we're looking to see what questions somebody will have sent, and then obviously what I'll try to do is do direct those questions to obviously the appropriate uh, speaker. So. We haven't sent questions yet. Apparently we've had no questions yet, so feel free to type in. Um, we're actually online for another 10 to 15 minutes, so please feel free. So while obviously somebody may be sending us in a question, <clears throat> I would just like to highlight a couple of events that will be going on here and, and actually uh, obviously are being supported by the British Chamber. The first is we will have a food and beverage industry forum on the 1st of June, which is taking place here in the Philippines at the uh, Holiday Inn uh, in Makati, which is in the commercial center of uh, here in Metro Manila. Uh, we have a very full program uh, with a variety of speakers uh, starting at 9.30 and concluding at noon and that will give obviously for those of those who are present a much greater profile uh, or more in depth in terms of the food and drink industry. Uh, related or not related to that thereafter we're having in conjunction with uh, the department uh, UKTI that's trade and industry is we're going to have a joint trade mission on the environment. Uh, environment covers infrastructure spending. Uh, again, uh, as mentioned by in the speakers, the first speaker, the economy in the Philippines has been growing. It's been one of the higher growth rates in Asia, and therefore there's also a need for further investments in the infrastructure of the country. Uh, obviously, that will be expanded upon. Then in August, we're also going to be looking to do a food and beverage trade mission. So as you can see, I believe in the Philippines, we have a lot of activities, uh, not only for the food and beverage industry, but as I've mentioned before, for infrastructure. Any question? Um, so feel free to ask any questions, either related obviously to the two presentations, if you've got a, com a question on the Philippines as a whole, on the economy, or on the work of the British Chamber, uh, please kindly forward it them. We have another 10 minutes, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so feel free to share any points or questions you may have. And once again, thank you very much for dialing in, and we appreciate the interest and support. Um, Hi, we have a, a question here from Rebecca, oh thank you, Rebecca Drakeford, and the question is, I was wondering what consumer perception are there towards the British products for beauty and food products, uh, would people prefer to buy Asian brands or Western brands? Well, let me kindly ask uh, our speaker, who's a, a lady as well, uh, Helen Grace, to comment on both those items, beauty and food, and do people prefer Asian or Western? Okay, um, I have a question about Asian brands. Um, Filipinos are known, quite known for their colonial, colonial mentality. So apparently um, people in this country prefer to buy um, British product or you know, American product, European product as compared to Asian products. 
specific because right now, of course, you know, the quality of the quality of the products from from Europe or from the US are better uh, compared that's the perception compared to um, products from Asia and um, safety issues are could also be like a concern so these products are more regulated compared to the products um, especially products from China okay can I kindly throw the question also hi Stephen uh, we'd also like to pose the question to Stephen so I think hopefully Stephen can hear me so what I'd like to get from his view is what is consumer perceptions to the British products, beauty and food, and do you prefer Asian brands or Western brands? If you'd like to comment. Thank you, Stephen. Hello, Chris. Yes. Uh, Helen Grace is right. Uh, most Filipinos would, this market is, uh, would like to experiment on a lot of uh, products. Yeah, it's not the type of market where, you know, uh, you stick to um, a former brand or, you know, a regular brand. So, you know, it's, it's good news for people who have to bring in new brands, no? uh, and uh, foreign brands, um, foreign sounding brands sometimes sell better than local brands, uh, you know, so it's good news for those who want to uh, bring in their products. Okay. Stephen, thank you very much, and thank you to Rebecca for the question. We have... Uh, a general question that was sent to us prior, uh, obviously, to this webinar, and I'll ask both of our speakers, um, and the general question is, how can we export our food and beverage products? Uh, obviously to the Philippines and is there any advice on entering the Philippine market so uh, why don't we reverse the order not ladies first we'll go Stephen first and yeah. then we'll come to Helen so Stephen please yeah. thank you there are a lot of trade shows no? and a lot of people are looking for products from outside the country uh, country distributors which are looking for good products to distribute in this country so if you're not aware of the topography, not aware of, of the geography of this country, uh, there are 7,000 islands. It's quite a good, quite, quite some doing to distribute your products all over the country. Um, it would be good to partner with a local, uh, national level uh, distributor. No? So again, there are many trade shows uh, starting started already, and every month we have one or two major trade shows. Uh, you could come up and uh, you can come over and exhibit your items uh, in one of these trade shows. You can Google them. Uh, there's Wafex, Ifex, Afex, no? A F E X, no? uh, Cial, S I A L. You're probably aware of that one. Uh, it's coming up. Actually, Cial is already next week, so that's a bit uh, too soon. But you know, you can go to the trade shows where you scout for good uh, local distributors, local partners. Okay, Stephen, thank you very much. Obviously, the focus there is to look for local distributors within the various uh, and numerous trade shows that occur in the country. So now we'd like to hand over to Ellen Grace. Uh, I believe I've mentioned earlier that um, one of the strengths uh, is of course includes the presence of the British Chamber of Commerce in the Philippines, the, the trade, uh, uh, the, uh, the UKTI, um, the country is also very active in assisting um, businesses um, from the UK in coming over and when it comes to regulations um, they can help as well and um, they can also seek the assistance of other industry or stakeholders like they can connect with us um, the Philippine Chamber of Food Manufacturers they can also connect with the European Philippine Business Network and these stakeholders will normally help um, provide um, various information when it comes to setting up new companies, providing them regulations when it comes to food drug administrations, uh, it comes to the Bureau of Customs, some clearances, and all these um, local regulations. So uh, this is it. I think this is the best uh, way to, to, to enter the Philippine market. That's the, um, yeah, that can be the start. 
Yeah, let me uh, first of all thanks again to Stephen and to Helen for both those replies. Can I just emphasize here at the British Chamber we work in conjunction with UKTI. We offer to all companies a service. It's called the Overseas Marketing Introduction Service. Uh, this being the Philippines, we believe in acronyms, so it's an OMIS, O-M-I-S. Uh, we're happy to obviously share what those services are and what it will require. And really, if you have a product which you think is viable, that's a good way to, to start off. I think that's it for tonight. Um, we'd like to thank all the companies for participating. But above all else, we'd like to thank, first of all, Stephen Chua, who's actually, I believe, in his office in Quezon City. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. I'd just like to add... Contributing and for... Chris, I'd just like to add that... Sorry? Uh, I'd just like to add that Tesco has brought in some of their products and tied up with the local supermarket chain. So that's another way of coming in, you know, uh, big to try out the market. Thank you for that. Yes, that's true. Tesco's are here amongst others, and that's well noted. So thank you for Stephen. That's very kind of you to join in. And, of course, Helen Gray, who's been actually here in our chamber office. For all of those in London, I'd say good morning. And for those of us in the Philippines, I say good evening. And please take the opportunity to look into the Philippines. I'm sure you will find it rewarded, and there are many opportunities to get the information you need. Thank you again. See you or hear you on our future webinars or events. Thank you very much, and good night. Thank you. And good night. Okay, we're done. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. You're all right? Yeah. Not too long. Um,